With over 100 unusual money-making methods successfully tested on this series, you would think at some point we'd start running out of things to try, but that's not the case. There's always new and exciting methods to explore, and today is no different. We have a new method that earned us more than almost any method before, and I'm testing out the riskiest method I've ever done. We even have a method where if you use a ball of wool on a cat, you access a completely separate drop table for that monster. Safe to say, this is an unusual episode. I'll just get straight to the point. I invested over 400 million GP for this first method, and there's a chance I lose it. Inside of the Revenant Caves deep in the wilderness, you can find an NPC called the Emblem Trader. He can do a couple of different things, like giving you a skull, but we only care about one thing. He will buy ancient artifacts from you, the ones dropped by the Revenants in the cave at a set price. The set price is usually always more expensive than the price of the artifacts on the Grand Exchange. For example, I can buy an ancient emblem from the Grand Exchange for 498,467 GP and sell it to him for 500k for a cheeky 1.5k profit. This doesn't seem like a lot, but here's the thing. You can sell stacks of these artifacts in noted form to him. And it's not just 5 or 10 or 20 at a time. It's everything instantly all at once. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I bought 200 ancient emblems on the Grand Exchange for 99,684,000 GP. And I'm going to bring them to the emblem trader. To test the waters for this method, I geared myself up in what I thought was appropriate tank gear and 25 of my 200 ancient emblems. If I die, I lose 13.6 million GP. And because I'm not scared, I won't be using any other accounts to scout to see if any PKers are there. Okay, I'm actually really scared, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I'd be less scared though if you subscribe to the channel. There's a couple things I haven't told you about this method that makes it a little scary. If you have an artifact of any kind on you when you die in the wilderness, you lose it no matter what. It cannot be protected. But what's even scarier is that the emblem trader will only buy your artifacts from you on a single world. The bounty hunter world. PKers know this, and there's no shortage of them trying to hunt down players doing this exact method. And since there's only one world where this method is possible, they know exactly where to find you. But that's not going to stop me, especially with how much GP can be made almost instantly. The only thing I did scout before going in was the location of the Emblem Trader, and he could be found in the center of the cave in level 28 Wilderness, which is perfect because that means I can trade him and instantly teleport out with my Gnome Seed Pod. Once I found him, I used my stack of Ancient Emblems on him and immediately accepted his 12.5 million GP offer. Then I teleported out and my trip is complete. I did one more trip with 25 Emblems, then I upped the ante and went with 50 Emblems, and finally on the last trip I took 100 noted Ancient Emblems with me. If I died with these, I lose over 50 million GP. Luckily, the emblem trader was humble today and I walked away with 100 million GP worth of traded emblems without dying. Mission accomplished. Subtract the 99.6 million GP I spent buying the emblems and we're looking at 316k profit in about 10 minutes of trading in the emblems. This honestly isn't that much, but we do have to take into account that this only took 10 minutes to make 316k. If I had done all 200 of the emblems in one trip, I would have made 316k in two minutes. This method's effective GP per hour all comes down to how much you're willing to risk, which I think is pretty unique for a moneymaker. For the sake of entertainment, I decided to up the risk for my next trip. 100 million GP risk to be exact. I bought 100 ancient medallions for 3,993,001 GP each for a total of 399.3 million. We're upgrading from the 500k emblem to the 4 million GP emblem for the chance at making more money. We'll once again be bringing 25 per trip. This time, our total risk is 100 million GP if we die. And what's even worse is that the emblem trader moved all the way up to level 38 wilderness, which means we can't instant teleport out if something goes wrong. Four trips of 100 million GP risk to make a bit of unusual profit. This time around, I teleported to the Northern Revenant Cave entrance with a Rev Cave teleport, traded in my 25 medallions for 100 million GP, left the cave, ran a bit south, and teleported out. That's what I did for all four trips. No PKers, no tanking, just profit. Exactly how I hoped it would go. By successfully trading 400 million GP worth of medallions, we were left with a profit of 700,000 GP in 5 minutes. Is this the smartest money maker you can do? Absolutely not. But you can make some serious profit very quickly. And there's even more money to be made with the more expensive artifacts, but I wasn't willing to risk that much just yet. Definitely a wacky, unusual money maker that will make you some good money very quickly. It's just a little bit risky.
It's time to start the new year off right by joining everyone's favorite meal kit, HelloFresh. Right now, if you use my link below and use code POGSOUP1 free, you receive a free breakfast item per box for life with an active subscription. Free and breakfast is a fantastic combination. HelloFresh lets you choose from 45 fresh new recipes every week that are delivered straight to your doorstep. The recipes are designed by professional chefs and nutritionists. Each box has high quality ingredients and easy to follow recipe cards, which leads to delicious meals Meals and teaches you a lot about how to cook and prepare food, a skill everyone should know. Kick off your wellness journey by choosing one of their many unique meal plan options like Calorie Smart and Protein Smart. They've got every type of meal plan to suit your lifestyle. I'm personally a big fan of the 15 minute recipes. Get your first box for only 29 bucks if you use my link below and use code POGSOUP1 free at checkout. That's only $5 per meal and you get a free breakfast item. No brainer if you ask me. Thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. We've done over 100 unique, unusual money-making methods on this series. Honestly, a huge amount. Sometimes methods that we've done in the past are brought to my attention again because they've had a big increase in the amount of money you can make per hour. That's exactly what's happening with method number 31 on our list, Relisim's Bombs. Back in the day, this method made us a cool 658,000 GP an hour. Really solid. Here's the thing, back then, the bombs were selling for 750 GP each. These days, they're around 1,750. And the method I have is even better than the one I did three years ago. Relisim's bombs can be bought from Uglognar south of Castle Wars. Thanks to the menu entry swapper plugin, we can buy bombs way faster than before. All we need to do is swap our left click option in the shop to buy 50, and swap the left click on our ring of dueling to teleport to Castle Wars. That way we never have to worry about right clicking anything. There are 100 Relisim's Sims bombs in the shop, and every time we buy one, the price goes up slightly. With current prices, I found that buying around 70 bombs per world was the ideal number. Then I would just hop to another world and repeat. Nobody else was doing this, so I had absolutely no competition. This time I used staminas to keep my run energy high instead of using the rejuvenation pool in my house. I felt really focused during the hour, and I ended up buying 3,455 three dose Relisim's bombs, which I promptly turned into 2,591 four dose bombs at the Grand Exchange. Last time I did this, I only managed to get 1,579 of them. Now, when it comes to listing an item like this on the GE, it's really important you pay attention to the buy and sell price. As you can see in this graph, I could instant sell these potions for 1,404 GP, or I can list them at 1,780 GP, a difference of 376 GP per potion. Now, this won't make them all sell instantly, but they eventually will sell over time. With that kind of margin, it's absolutely worth the wait unless you're truly desperate for some fast GP. So I listed all of them at 1780 GP, and after three hours, all of them successfully sold. A bit of a wait, but worth it for how much profit I'm going to make. All of the potions and vials sold for 4,570,651 GP. We spent 1,205,820 GP on the bombs from the shop. So subtract that out from the total, subtract 80K, which was the cost of the stamina potions and dueling rings I used, and we are left with 3.28 million GP. 3.28 million from one hour of buying Relisim's bombs from Uglognar. I think it's safe to say that this method is insane. With a consistent high volume and great margins, this is one of the best unusual money makers we've covered. Always make sure to pay attention to the price for this as well. As you can see in this graph, the bombs occasionally sell for over 2,000 GP each, but at times also drop below 1,000. As is the case with a lot of these unusual methods, it all comes down to timing. Fantastic method. If you want the definition of unusual, look no further than the drop table of the Gorax found in the Gorak Plain. For some odd reason, Gorax in this area roll the gem drop table 100% of the time. The only thing they can drop is from this drop table. The gem drop table is different from the rare drop table, however the rare drop table still has a chance of dropping something from the gem drop table. The gem drop table also has a chance of rolling the mega rare drop table. Confused? I don't blame you at all. This game is weird. What makes the Gorax drops even more confusing in this area is that Gorax exist outside of the Gorak Plain. You can find them in the God Wars and Wilderness God Wars dungeons. These Gorax have a completely different drop table which include weapons, armor, herbs, and coins. It's very strange. Because the Gorax and the Gorak Plain roll from the gem drop table 100% of the time, they're actually a decent way, if you're an Iron Man, to get yourself a shield left half which is needed for an Ardoin diary task. You just need to make sure that you've done the Legends quest and are wearing a Ring of Wealth. 
Now, what's even stranger is that there's a way to access their normal drop table in this area. You just have to do some strange things to get it. For example, if you use a ball of wool on a cat after killing a Gorak, the Gorak will drop an item from its regular drop table instead of the gem drop table. If you do an uninterruptible action while the Gorak dies, you'll receive loot from its normal drop table instead of the gem drop table. This place is fucked up. The OSR's wiki admins have a theory on why this happens, and it pretty much boils down to a bug in the code. Of course. Feel free to pause the video and read through this really interesting tweet. I'll also leave it in the description below. Shout out to the OSR's wiki guys. So I made it my goal to get a shield left half from these Gorax to see how long it would take and how much profit we'd make along the way. I used the GP per hour plugin on RuneLight to track exactly how much I was making and how much I was spending on supplies. It shows you exactly how much money you've gained and lost per trip, which is really helpful when calculating profit per hour. Gorax themselves are just strange monsters to kill. They never become unaggressive, which means that you could stand here forever and they'll keep attacking you forever. Protection prayers do not work and every time a Gorak successfully hits you, a random stat, except hit points, gets drained by 1-4 to four levels. Just a very odd monster. I went there with pretty much max melee gear and some supplies and didn't have too many issues. Just make sure you bring a gem bag since you'll be picking up a lot of them. Since all you're getting here are gem table drops, you just get a funky mixture of things like nature talismans, loop and tooth half of keys, rune javelins and spears, long bones, and of course a lot of gems. It took 2 hours, but I managed to snag myself not only a dragon spear, but a shield left half as well. The two rarest drops here. With that mission accomplished, we finished off the hour with this loot, 437k. The most money came from the crystal keys that I made, about 160k worth. We spent 120k on supplies, which means that after 2 2 hours, our profit total was 370k. Killing Gorax using our method comes out to about 158,000 GP an hour. Nothing special about the profit, but a very unusual method, which is what we love to see. Amulet of Eternal Glories are a mind-boggling 80 million GP. At their peak, they were well over 100 million. If you didn't know, you can get one by using an uncharged Amulet of Glory at the Fountain of Rune, which gives you a 1 in 25,000 chance of receiving one. Because of this, taking an inventory of uncharged glories out to the wilderness to try and get lucky is a pretty popular method these days. Now, if you don't get an Eternal Glory, you instead get an Amulet of Glory with 6 charges. Because of how many players are doing this, the price of the Amulet of Glory 6 is very very cheap. In fact, it's cheaper to buy a fully charged Amulet of Glory than it is to buy an uncharged one. An uncharged glory is more desirable than a charged one since you need an uncharged one to have a chance of getting the eternal glory. Do you see where I'm going with this? We're going to uncharge Amulet of Glories to make money. This method has been suggested to me so many times. Even Torvesta suggested I try it out. Here's how the method works. Buy a bunch of Amulet of Glory 6s, change the left click option of them in your inventory to rub, then just spam either 1, 2, 3, or 4 in your keyboard to teleport somewhere. That's it. That's all you have to do. Now, most of you suggested that I use every charge on a glory to turn it from an Amulet of Glory 6 to an uncharged amulet, but I decided to do it a little bit differently. I noticed that the price of an Amulet of Glory 4 was more expensive than the Uncharged Glory. This means that I only have to use up 2 charges per glory. Less clicking, more glories uncharged, and I make more money. That's an absolute win. I was able to turn a full inventory of Amulet of Glory 6s into Amulet of Glory 4s in about 3 minutes, give or take 10 seconds. The more focused you are, the more glories you're going to be able to uncharge. After 1 hour, I had uncharged 532 Amulet of Glories. In total, I spent 5,755,176 GP to buy the Amulet of Glory 6s. All of the Amulet of Glory 4s took about 45 minutes to sell, which made me 6,699,476 GP. So, subtract the original 5.7 million from this, and we are left with 944,300 GP profit from one hour of uncharging Amulet of Glories. Almost 1 million GP an hour doing this. One of the best parts about this is that there are no requirements. You can do this on a fresh account if you wanted to. Whether you're turning these 6 charge glories into 4 charge or completely uncharging it, there's always money to be made here. Especially when an Amulet of Eternal Glory is so expensive. Pretty cool method. Some of my favorite unusual money-making methods are ones that were released way back in the first few years of the game's release, especially ones that still make you great money. 
The Sinister Chest and the Anil Agility Dungeon is the perfect example of this. The Sinister Key and Sinister Chest were released all the way back in 2002, over 20 years ago. Now, back in the day, the only way to obtain a Sinister Key to open the Sinister Chest was to kill Salarin the Twisted, who can also be found in the Anil Agility Dungeon. However, since 2002, a couple other ways of obtaining a Sinister Key have been added to the game. Magpie Implings in 2007, and the Chaos Fanatic in 2014. This means that more Sinister Keys were coming into the game, leading to a drop in their price. The Sinister Chest guarantees you six different types of herbs. Three Renar, two Harlander, and one Irit, Avento, Quorum, and Torstal. In 2014, the chest began giving you these herbs in noted form, which meant that you could start bringing a lot more keys to this chest and leaving with a lot more herbs. Currently, one Sinister Key costs 28,150 GP, and the nine herbs we receive from it would net us 30,523 GP, which means that every time we open this chest, we profit 2,373 GP. Great potential for some serious profit. With a crafting cape on my back, teleports to Yanil in my inventory, and 26 Sinister Keys, I made my way to the Anil Agility Dungeon, which can be found just north of Anil behind some webs that you need to slash to get through. Once down here, cross the wooden ledge, crawl through the pipe, and you'll end up in a room full of skeletons and the Sinister Chest. From here, all you have to do is simply open the chest, wait to receive the herbs, and repeat. I spent 11.26 million GP on 400 Sinister Keys, which is about how many you'll need if you do this for an entire hour. This chest is a bit funky since it doesn't immediately give you loot like other chests do. There seems to be some type of stall or animation that happens while opening it, which prevents you from receiving the noted herbs instantly. I tried a bit of tick manipulation to see if I could circumvent this, but it just didn't work. I think this is just a truly old school chest that takes a bit longer to receive loot from than other chests do. Once I used up all the keys in my inventory, I would teleport to the crafting guild, bank all my herbs, and since you get poisoned every time you open the chest, I would replenish my HP with my rejuvenation pool and my POH. I am happy to announce that after reading many comments on my last unusual money making video making fun of me for not having 99 construction, I was successfully bullied into getting it. Now I have the construction cape and infinite teleports to my house. Thanks for the push guys. So that's pretty much the method. Go there with a bunch of keys, open up the chest, get all your herbs, and repeat. After one hour, I had opened 400 sinister chests, which left me with 1200 Renars, 800 Harlanders, and 400 Irits, Aventos, Torstals, and Quorums. After looking up the appropriate selling price, I listed all of the herbs on the Grand Exchange for a bit higher than normal, since the Grand Exchange tax really does cut into profit these days. I waited about 25 minutes for all of them to sell, and they all sold for a total of 12 million, 209,200 GP. Subtract the cost of the Sinister Keys, which was 11.26 million, and we are left with a profit of 949,200 GP, almost 1 million GP an hour. For a method that involves things released over 20 years ago to still profit you that much GP an hour is amazing. If it had been 500k an hour, I still would have been very happy. Just pay attention to the price of the keys, and if the price is right, this unusual method is always going to make some solid GP. If you have any unusual money makers you'd like me to try out, make sure to send them to me on Twitter or in my Discord. I'm excited to find some new methods to try out. As promised in my last video, the first teaser for Gilinor Games Season 4 is out. If you'd like a sneak peek at it, check it out on my Twitter or join my Discord and watch it there. We've got a bunch of Gilinor Games fans in there, so feel free to discuss it with everyone else. We're in the post-production phase now, so these next months are going to be full of editing the show until it releases this spring. I absolutely cannot wait. As usual, I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.